Scalp block targets the following nerves superorbital and supratrochlear nerves, the sagomedico-temporal nerve, the auriculotemporal nerve, the greater occipital, the lesser occipital nerves. Common reasons for providing anesthesia to the scalp are repair of laceration, foreign body removal, or exploration of the scalp wounds and drainage abscesses, or even subdural hematomas. In neurosurgery, adverse hemodynamic reactions can occur during craniotomy due to surgical stimulation. For example, the insertion of cranial pins in the main field, incision of the scalp, during craniotomy or during the dural incision. These reactions can be modulated by local or regional anesthesia with the additional benefits of postoperative anesthesia. Local anesthesia for scalp blockade is essential in the intraoperative anesthetic management of patients undergoing a weight craniotomy, and local scalp blocks are particularly useful when the patient's cooperation is needed for functional testing during a weight craniotomy. The greater occipital nerve arises from the second cervical nerve root that emerges between the atlas and the axis. The greater occipital nerve is most often located immediately medial to the occipital artery. The greater occipital nerve provides continuous innervation to the major portion of the posterior scalp from the level of the external occipital protuberance to the vertex. This block is useful for the pain relief after posterior craniotomies, revision of insertion of PP shunts, as well as for diagnosis and pain treatment secondary to various headache syndromes. The greater occipital nerve is located approximately two-thirds of the distance on a line drawn from the center of the mastoid to the external occipital protuberance along the superior nuchal line, where it lies medially to the occipital artery. The pulsation of the occipital artery is easy to palpate, and palpation of this area may elicit paresthesia. A 25 or 27 gauge needle can be used depending on the size of the patient. The needle is directed 90 degrees towards the occiput after aspiration once or three mLs of local anesthetic is injected. And the lesser occipital nerve is two-thirds lateral to the external occipital protuberance. And so the needle, you can inject between one and a half to two mLs of local anesthetic. The frontal nerve enters the orbit at the superior orbital fissure and divides into the superorbital and supertrochlear branches. The supertrochlear nerve appears more medial through the superorbital notch. These two branches supply the sensory innervation to the frontal scalp and the forehead, the medial part of the upper eyelid and the root of the nose. Here we can see the supertrochlear and superorbital nerves. The supertrochlear nerve um, is sensory distribution you can see here with the, um, in, in the picture on the red, the superorbital nerve uh, sensory distribution in the tan color. The superorbital foramen can be easily palpated by following the orbit rim about two centimeters from the midline in adults. It's located approximately at the same sagittal plane as the pupil in most patients. Then you take a needle and introduce about half a centimeter under the inferior edge of the eyebrow and is directed medially encephalized. When the needle tip is needle at the superorbital notch, administer 1 ml, which then will create a subcutaneous wheel. For a supertrochlear block, the landmark is a top angle formed by the eyebrow and the nasal spine where the nerve is contacted with the bone. The supertrochlear nerve can be blocked immediately following the superorbital nerve block without removing the needle by directing the needle about one centimeter towards the midline and injecting an additional half an ml of local anesthetic. The psychomatic medicotemporal nerve innervates a small area of the forehead and temporal area. The injection technique should be to block this nerve. You slide a one and a half and a needle behind the concave portion of the lateral orbital rim. The index finger in the depression of the posterior lateral aspect of the lateral orbital rim, place the needle posteriorly to the finger. Upon exiting the skin, proceed to walk the needle down the concave position wall of the lateral orbital rim, approximately to the level of the lateral canthus. At this point, the block can be accomplished by injecting anywhere from 1 to 2 mLs of local anesthetic. Here we see the auriculotemporal nerve. The sensory um, distribution of this nerve can be seen here depicted in the purple box. The auricular Temporal nerve can be blocked by injecting local anesthetic solution above the posterior portion of the zygoma, anterior to the ear and behind the superficial temporal artery. The needle, 27 gauge, is inserted anterior to the superior tragus. Here you have to exercise caution given the vicinity to the temporal artery, which you should palpate. 